Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jonathan and welcome back to another video. In this video, I wanna compare the Axon phone. Now this isn't the Axon Pro, it's the Axon that you can get on Amazon right now for around 450 bucks versus the OnePlus 2. Both of these phones are pretty much aiming at the same market in the sense that they wanna go for a budget style device, making them super affordable and packing very premium specs. The OnePlus 2 you can get on the OnePlus website with an invite for around 380 to 400 bucks. I don't know how much it's gonna cost with shipping or when it comes to taxes. The Axon phone you can get on Amazon right now for 450 bucks, and I'll leave a link in the description of this video in case you guys wanna check it out for yourself. Now both of these phones feature a very premium build. The OnePlus 2 is a major advancement over the OnePlus 1. It features a metal trim that goes around the edges and the back is removable so you can pop it off and then put on a new style swap cover and they come in many different assortments. Um, and they're supposed to be releasing new ones in the future. That metal trim on the side gives it a little bit more heft, making it fit in the palm of your hand with its curvature and that nice weight very nicely. It lets you know that you're holding a very premium phone. I don't know what else to say about it. It feels very, very nice. Now the Axon phone takes on a similar design to the HTC One M9 or the HTC One M8, meaning that it's all metal constructed and it's very slippery, but at the same time, it is a much more premium device, especially when you consider that it's pretty much all made of metal. The Axon phone is a little bit wider and it's a little bit taller than the OnePlus 2. And the reason why it's a little bit taller is because it features front facing speakers, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Now, despite the Axon being made of more metal, being wider and taller, they both have the same weight. And I think that's because the OnePlus 2 actually has thicker metal that goes around the edges. Each of these phones feature their own unique qualities when it comes to their design. Take the OnePlus 2, for example. It features USB type C. Now, whether this is a pro or a negative, I'm gonna leave in your hands. Since you really don't get all the necessary features with this USB Type-C connection, meaning you don't get any faster data speeds, you don't get fast charging, all you get is a reversible plug. So I'll leave that in your hands and you can decide whether you like that or not. You also get a fingerprint scanner with the OnePlus 2, so if you needed that added comfort of security, the OnePlus 2 is definitely the way to go. You also get laser autofocus on the back, and as I said, you get removable backplates, and underneath those backplates, you're gonna find a dual SIM card. Now the highlights of the Axon phone include dual stereo speakers on the front and there is no way in hell the OnePlus 2 can remotely compete with the sound quality that comes out of the Axon phone. You also get a dedicated camera button on the side. Even though you can't launch the camera app with this button, you can snap a photo. And then of course you get dual rear facing uh, cameras. One camera is 13 megapixels while the other is two megapixels. The two megapixel camera is similar design to the one on the HTC M8. So it's gonna give you some depth information so that way you can use some added features that's built into the software. Now one thing I will talk about when it comes to their design are the buttons. The OnePlus 2 buttons, in my personal opinion, are not the best. You might have a different experience, but they don't stick out long enough and they're too close together. I love the buttons on the Axon phone. You have the power button on one side, then you have the volume rocker on the other, and there's a good, nice tactile feel to them, and they're even a little bit textured. Now the OnePlus 2 features a home button that's not very tactile. You can't press it in and it doesn't click. You definitely have to press it, but you just put your finger on top of it. So it's more like a track pad. And then you have your back button and then your background app switcher, which are done in lines and they can be customized in software. The Axon phone takes a similar design in the sense that instead of having lines for your back button and your background app switcher, they're dots but instead of having a indented button that has a fingerprint scanner, you actually have a circle which acts as your home button which glows because that's your LED indicator as well. So when it comes to their displays, the Axon phone packs a Quad HD TFT panel display and it looks amazing, it's Quad HD. But if you were to look at these phones at different times, so say you looked at the Axon phone one day and then you turn around and looked at the OnePlus 2 a day later, you probably wouldn't notice a difference. The OnePlus 2 packs an amazing 1080p display and everything is crisp and the colors are very, very accurate. But when you compare them side by side, that's when you notice the real difference here. If you take a look at this picture here, the Axon phone just has much more detail. The screen actually gets a bit brighter, making for better outdoor visibility. Plus you can see the colors are way more vibrant on the Axon phone versus the one found on the OnePlus 2. And if you can't see what I mean by the detail, let me just zoom in here and then you can look at the water where the moon is reflecting off of it and you can see there's actually more detail in the Axon phone versus the OnePlus 2. If we pull up the color grid here, you can see colors are actually more accurate though on the OnePlus 2 versus the Axon phone. 
it's not a huge difference and you can only see there's certain spectrums where I'm telling you this, but the Axon phone is actually not quite as accurate when it comes to its color gamma as the OnePlus 2. This may be because it's a TFT panel and not an IPS panel. That I don't know, I'm not a display expert, but you can just tell something's off when you look at the color grid on this shot here. In any case, blacks still get dark and inky on both of these phones and whites get super bright. But like I said though, just another reminder, the OnePlus 2 does not get as bright as the Axon phone. Now viewing angles on both of these phones are great. I didn't experience any issues and you can still make out what's on your screen when you're doing some off access viewing. I did notice a slight yellow tint though on the OnePlus 2 at the bottom left corner. It's hard to get it on film, so I'm telling you about it right now in front of the camera. It really was kind of weird. Not so much as last year's model, just kind of like a orangish yellowish tint and it went about halfway down the side of my phone to the bottom left corner. On the Axon phone, you can see some light leaking on the bottom portion, especially around where the buttons are on the very bottom. So in conclusion, when it comes to their displays, the Axon phone definitely has a better display. It gets brighter, it's quad HD, has more detail, off access viewing is just as good as the OnePlus 2, and overall it's just a better experience. And they're both the same size. They have a 5.5 inch displays. So when it comes to hardware and overall performance, you're looking at the same exact specs. And that is the Snapdragon 810 processor, which has been underclocked to 1.8 gigahertz to avoid overheating. You're looking at the Adreno 430 for graphics, four gigabytes of RAM on both, but the way they're different is the Axon phone only has 32 gigabytes of storage, which is the only option available. And the OnePlus 2 you can get in 64 gigabytes, and that is the top end model, which features the four gigabytes of RAM. When it comes to the performance, they both pretty much perform identically. Where one shines over the other is software, and I'll cover that in just a minute. But if you look at the Geekbench benchmarks, you can see the OnePlus 2 does slightly outperform the Axon phone, and this also carries over into the Antutu benchmarks. But if you actually do some research and take a look, the Axon phone actually has a little bit more power when it comes to its RAM, so it should be able to handle multitasking just a tiny, maybe a little bitty hair better than the OnePlus 2, but I really didn't find that the case. When it comes to this real world performance outside of these benchmarks, everything performs wonderfully. Everything is very fluid, hardly any hiccups or stutters, especially during gameplay. Games on these phones are amazing, more so on the Axon phone thanks to its quad HD display and dual front facing stereo speakers. It just makes a more immersive experience, especially when it comes to viewing content, movies, or even listening to music. It's just a much better overall experience. Now when it comes to overheating, both phones still overheat. They don't overheat enough to where they shut off, but you could still feel the back get slightly warm, especially if you're gaming for long periods of time. Neither one is uncomfortable, but it could definitely make your hand sweat. The Axon phone gets a little bit hotter and that's thanks to its more metal constructed design. That metal gets awfully hot sometimes. When it comes to software, both of these phones offer a similar but different experience. With the OnePlus 2, you pretty much get a stock version of Android 5.1.1 running the Oxygen OS, but like I said, it's pretty much stock. Everything is very fluid, everything is very responsive. The key benefit to Oxygen OS over a stock version of Android is customizations. Even though it's not highly as customizable as the CyanogenMod mod was, you still get a few options. Some of these features include the ability to switch to soft keys instead of the hard keys, which is my personal preference because that home button is just terrible. And you can also design double tap actions such as a double tap on the camera button to launch the camera app, similar to the Galaxy S6 or the Note 5. You can also change it from light mode to dark mode and then change your accent color, giving you a little bit more customization when it comes to visible appearance. And you can also select a different icon pack. There's a few more other options, but those are the highlights that I find that I use the most. So when you look at the software on the Axon phone, it's a little bit different. Either you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. It's still running an almost stock version of Android 5.1.1, but the launcher, it's a little bit thicker than the one on the OnePlus 2. The icons are all themed and to me, they look not the best. I ended up downloading Nova Launcher and threw on Moonshine and it ran great and it looked much, much better. But when it comes to their OS and the fluidity of it, everything is very responsive. Everything is very minimalistic as well, including the lock screen. I love the lock screen on the Axon phone and I love the music player and the overall design of the minimalism when it comes to their OS. I just don't like their icon pack and some of the other things about it. So like I said, once I threw on a custom launcher, no issues at all. Now some of the features that are built into the Axon phone, such as customization, you can find by holding down on the home screen or whatever screen you're on and it will pull up a menu where you can select a theme, you can select different wallpapers, you can select different transition effects. 
So it gives you some customization, just not as much as the Oxygen OS on the OnePlus 2. You also get the ability to switch around the buttons on the bottom so you can have the back button on the right or you can have it on the left and vice versa. Now with the Axon phone, you have some health related features. You have a built in pedometer. You can track your diet, your weight, your activity throughout the day, so on and so forth. So they're big when it comes to stuff like that. They're also big when it comes to music and that's thanks to its dual front facing JBL stereo speakers. And yes, I said JBL because it's powered by JBL technology and they also feature JBL headphones, which actually you can purchase JBL headphones for the OnePlus 2, but you're not gonna get the same experience and that's thanks to the JBL drivers built into the Axon phone. Overall, the software experience on both of these phones is great. However, my personal preference is definitely the OnePlus 2 and that's because it's pretty much stock and there's nothing better than a stock Android feel in my personal opinion. It's more fluid, you get less lag and you don't get as many apps for closing and things like that. So when it comes to battery life on both of these phones, they're average to below average. The OnePlus 2 packs a 3300 milliamp hour battery, which automatically you would assume is gonna get you amazing battery life, and that really wasn't the case in my testing. It was getting anywhere between two and a half to three and a half hours of on-screen time every day in my usage. The most I got was a little bit over four hours, but like I said, that was at the most, and that was before all these new updates. The Axon phone packs a 3000 milliamp hour battery and it is also powering a quad HD display and I was getting pretty much the same battery life at a more consistent level. Every day I was getting three to three and a half hours of on-screen time and there really wasn't any days I would get below three hours. So like I said, more consistent and pretty much the same battery life. You also get Qualcomm's Quick Charge, which is not featured on the OnePlus 2. So when it comes to battery life, of course, the winner goes to Axon hands down. So when it comes to the cameras, both phones feature 13 megapixel cameras on the front and five megapixel cameras on the back. The OnePlus 2 features laser autofocus and optical image stabilization, where the Axon phone features a dual camera setup on the back, a two megapixel and a 13 megapixel, and that's for depth perception, so that way you can alter your focus after you've taken the photo and do a few other things such as uh, multi-exposure and things like that. When it comes to camera software, these phones are completely different. The OnePlus 2 takes a more simplistic minimal route, meaning that you're gonna get minimal features and a very stock Android feel. The highlights include HDR, clear image, and then you can do beauty mode. And of course you have a few settings in video as well, and then you can do a time lapse. The Axon phone, however, is feature rich when it comes to their camera software. You have things like multi exposure, you have HDR, you have like a beauty mode, you have different filters. But one of my favorites is the bokeh mode. Even though it lets you adjust the aperture, it's not really adjusting the aperture on your phone or the camera built into the phone. It's actually emulating the f1.0 aperture if you go that low, or it's emulating the aperture of f4.0 if you go that high. And it uses a secondary camera to do this, producing a background that is much similar to the bokeh that you get on maybe an APS-C camera. Even though it's using that secondary lens to do this, you can pull off some awesome shots. So when it comes to camera quality, both phones are capable of producing amazing images, more so on the OnePlus 2 due to its level of consistency. The Axon phone does take a great photos, just not all the time. It overexposes more or underexposes more. Sometimes photos come out a bit grainy. It's just not a better experience than the OnePlus 2. And with the OnePlus 2's added optical image stabilization built into the camera, you're gonna get better low light performance versus the Axon phone, and you're also gonna get better video performance. So whether you're recording 4K or 1080p, it's gonna look a lot more cleaner, a lot more stabilized on the OnePlus 2 versus the Axon. That's not saying the Axon can't take great video, but it might be a little bit more wobbly versus what's found on the OnePlus 2. And like I said, the OnePlus 2 does perform better in low light, but both cameras are very slow when it comes to that shutter speed and low light and also capturing focus. So even though the OnePlus 2 does feature laser autofocus, I really didn't find it any quicker than the focusing system found on the Axon phone. So ultimately at the end of the day, it comes down to, is the Axon phone worth 50 to 60 bucks more than the OnePlus 2? And that comes down to your personal preference. Do you want a more solid constructed phone made of more metal with a very, very premium feel, but it's also slippery and can get a little bit more warmer when it comes to extensive gameplay, but features an amazing sound experience, beautiful display, and overall when it comes to multimedia, it's gonna give you a great experience. Or do you want something that's a little bit cheaper, still performs just as good, you're gonna get more of a stock feel, 
you're gonna get okay sound out of the bottom speaker. You're gonna get great call quality. You're gonna get inconsistent battery life, but you get tons of customization built into Oxygen's OS, or you can root and then flash a custom ROM without voiding your warranty. And then you can also buy swappable backplates, giving you the ability and flexibility to wear out the one that you have, buy another one and keep your phone going. My personal preference, I would probably still go with the OnePlus 2 over the Axon phone, only because I can't justify that $60 difference. Both phones have their strengths and both phones have their weaknesses, but at the end of the day, the OnePlus 2 still is a better deal for your money. Well guys, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, drop me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. Go ahead and follow me on all my social media connections so you can get at me with any questions you may have. And of course, as always guys, I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.